वेलकम डियर कलीग्स आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस विद यू सम टैक्स प्लानिंग एस्पेक्ट्स विच आर नेसेसरी फॉर ए सैलरीड एम्प्लॉय सिंस वी ऑल आर सैलरीड एम्प्लॉयज सो इट इज नेसेसरी फॉर अस टू नो हाउ आई कैन प्लान माई टैक्स अफेयर्स फॉर एनी ईयर सिंस राइट नो वी आर गोइंग ऑन इन सेप्टेम्बर टू थाउजेंड नाइनटीन सो फॉर टैक्सेशन our year is 1920 going on during 1920 what decisions i can take as a salaried employee and what decisions i should not take as a salaried employee so some tax planning issues are with point by point first issue the main question which most of the salaried employees have in their mind is whether we should be having our own residential house or we should live in a residential house which has been taken on rent of course we should be having our own residential house then the next question arises whether i should purchase or construct my own residential house from my own money from my own savings or i should go in the market for amount of loan that means whether i should purchase the residential house from my own money or from borrowed money now government has a purpose to be fulfilled housing for all and that is why government wants that the people have their own houses and government gives so many tax benefits let me explain those tax benefits to you so this discussion basically for next 2 to 4 minutes is helpful for those who are thinking of purchasing their residential house and who do not have their uh, residential house right now i should purchase a residential house by taking a loan from a financial institution and the loan has been sanctioned during 1920 that means 1st april 2019 till 31st march 2020 second point i should not be having any residential house in my own name when the loan is got sanctioned third point the stamp duty value of this house should not exceed 45 lakh rupees so basically this benefit is for middle income class if these three conditions are satisfied that i have my loan got sanctioned from a financial institution during the year 1920 the stamp duty value of this house doesn't exceed 45 lakhs and i am not owning any residential house then whatever interest i pay to this financial institution up to 1 lakh 50000 per year of that interest i can deduct when i am computing my taxable income for example if my salary income is 14 lakhs per year and if i have taken a loan where the interest payment is around 1 lakh 50000 per year i will not pay tax on 14 lakh i can deduct this interest 1 lakh 50 which i have paid to this financial institution on the loan taken for residential house property and my taxable salary in that case becomes 12 lakh 50000 since above 10 lakh rupees per year the income tax rate is 30% for a salaried employee so how much you have saved had you not took this loan you would have paid tax on 14 lakh since you took this loan and i am assuming that the interest payment is 1 lakh 50000 your taxable income is around 12 lakh 50000 so technically you are reducing your income by 1 lakh 50 and above 10 lakh rupees 30% is the tax rate so 150 into 30% yearly you have saved how much 45000 as tax this is one saving apart from this we have one more deduction on this interest amount if i have my self occupied house property and if i have taken a loan from a financial institution or from non financial institution or even from a relative then up to 2 lakh rupees interest payment i can also claim as deduction so there are basically two sections going on for this up to 2 lakh rupees interest payment i can claim as deduction under one section up to 1 lakh 50000 interest payment per year i can claim as deduction under another section so if you combine this total benefit then i can say that up to 3 lakh 50000 rupees per year on account of interest payment is allowed to a to a person 
who is interested in purchasing a residential house property. And you can see the impact of this interest. On payment of this uh, 3,50,000, suppose we have taken a loan of 40 lakh rupees per year. On 40 lakh rupees per year loan, on an average, your interest payments comes out to be 30, uh, 3 lakh 50,000 rupees. Now, tax saving is 30 percent because our income, suppose salary income is 14 lakh rupees. So, aggregate interest saving is 3 lakh 50. If you multiply this by 30 percent, your yearly tax saving comes out to be 1 lakh 5,000 rupees. On per month basis, it is approximately 9,000 per month. So, there is a huge saving. So, when you are paying the installment of housing loan, 30,000 per month, effectively you are saving 9,000 per month and your net outflow is only 21,000 per month. So, there is no benefit of living in a residential house which has been taken on rent. As a tax expert, my suggestion is go for purchasing a residential house property. You will save a huge amount of tax. So, this is one point where I stress upon the fact that a salaried employee should go for purchasing a residential house property because of huge tax saving involved. And government also wants the people to have their own houses. That is why they are giving or extending this benefit to us. Now, this is one tax planning, which you can think in the coming months. Second tax planning. Suppose I have already a residential house and suppose my job is transferred from one city to another city. Now, I want to sell this residential house. When I sell this residential house property, there are chances that I earn some profit because normally the property value increases. Now, suppose I have acquired a residential, I have purchased a residential house property 10 years ago and now I am selling this residential house property and suppose my capital gain, my profit on this sale comes out to be 80 lakh rupees. 80 lakh is a huge profit. Any profit which has arisen to me from sale of a residential house after two years from the date of its purchase is subject to a flat rate of 20% tax. So, on 80 lakh rupees, I need to pay at the rate of 20%, 16 lakh as tax to the government of India. But government gives me a benefit. Government says no need to pay this tax. But what I have to do? I have to purchase another residential house property in India within some time limit. So, whatever I invest in this new residential house property, I can save that much amount of tax. Assuming my profit on the sale of the property comes out to be 80 lakh rupees as per my example. Now, suppose I have invested in another property which is of the value of 50 lakh rupees. So, what I can do as per the tax provisions that my profit will not be treated as 80 lakh rupees. I can deduct 50 lakh rupees, which is the investment in the new house and my profit will be only 30 lakh rupees and on 30 lakh I will pay the tax at the rate of 30 percent, which is 6 lakh. So, technically I have saved how much? 10 lakh rupees as tax to the government because government says if you are selling the residential house property, then whatever is your profit, you invest it in another residential house property, we do not need any tax. And moreover, now in this year, government has extended the benefit of this provision because sometimes what happens is I want to purchase two house properties, maybe for different child. Maybe I have one residential house property initially, but the family has become big and I have two child who wants to live separately. So, what I should do? I should have to purchase the two houses for those two children separately. So, government says this year that now when you have sold one house, and you have invested in two houses, then investment in two houses is now allowed as deduction. Till last year what was happening, that if I have sold one house, I have to purchase only one house additionally. 
but now in this year what is happening even if i have sold one house i can invest in two houses and whatever is the investment that will be reduced from my profit and remaining is taxable at the rate of 20 percent this is also a benefit that when you are thinking of selling your residential house you can think of purchasing or constructing even two residential houses what you invest in these two houses will be reduced from the profit and remaining will be treated as taxable profit but you have to remember one thing in this case if you avail this option of investment in two houses, it is lifetime option. Then from future you cannot avail this option. It is one time opportunity. If you want to invest in two houses, you can take the benefit, but it is one time opportunity. Thereafter you cannot claim this benefit of investment in two houses. So this is a point that I can do tax planning if I am thinking of selling a residential house. I can purchase or construct any two, two residential houses in India. This is the second point of discussion which I have discussed with you. Now another discussion with you relevant point is, sometimes I, I think of transferring some assets to our spouse. If a salaried employee as a husband, if I am thinking of transferring 10 lakh rupees to my wife, I need to check some tax provisions. So we have some tax provisions that whenever a salaried employee transfers some amount or property to any relative, to any relative, then the relative who will receive this amount or property has not to show this income as taxable income. Income Tax Act says that any amount received or any property received by any person from a relative is exempt from tax. For example, if I transfer this 10 lakh rupees to my wife, my wife is covered under the definition of relative for this purpose and my wife will not include 10 lakh as my income. If I transfer 10 lakh rupees to my friend, then my friend is not covered in the definition of relative. My friend has to include this 10 lakh as his income on which tax has to be paid by my friend. So transfer of cash or property, whether movable property or immovable property is not taxable if the recipient is whom? A relative of this person who is transferring the property. This is also a tax money. You can think of transferring this by reading the provisions, relevant provisions. Then we have another concept of planning which is known as clubbing, where income will be merged. Now when? Now suppose I have transferred rupees 10 lakh to my wife without any consideration. I haven't taken anything from my wife, but I have transferred 10 lakh to my wife. My wife will not include 10 lakh as the income. It is exempt because my wife is covered in the definition of relative. But what she will earn from this 10 lakh rupees, it is taxable not in the hands of my wife, but in my hands. It is known as clubbing of income. It is basically a measure to prevent tax evasion. So many people earlier were doing what? When they are high income people, they were transferring the assets to the spouse, to the wife, and whatever income will be, was earned by that wife, wife was paying the tax. So they were dividing the income between two individuals so that different tax exemptions can be taken. But there is a clubbing applicable and it says when any individual transfers any asset to the spouse, if it is without consideration, then whatever income will be earned by this spouse, the spouse will not pay the tax on this income. As a transferer, I need to include this income in my hands and I will pay the tax on this income. So you have to uh, keep remember this point also that when you are thinking of transferring anything to the spouse make sure that whatever income will be earned on that amount which is transferred you have to pay the tax not the spouse this is the provision also which we have covered now next provision minor child 
as a salaried employee, as a married person, we must be having our minor children. So what we do normally, we open some account, saving account for a minor child. And we deposit some amount in that account. So bank will give the interest on that amount, which is in on that amount, in that account which is in the name of a minor child. So whatever interest income is there, which is earned by whom? By a minor child. From what? From this saving account. It is taxable in my hands or my wife's hands. Depends whose income is higher. The question is, it is not taxable in the hands of this minor child. So Income Tax Act says that if any income is earned by a minor child, the minor child will not pay the tax. Income will be included by the father or the mother of this minor child whose total taxable income is higher. But in three cases, minor child will pay the tax. If minor child is a differently abled person, then parents will not pay the tax, minor child will pay the tax. If minor child has earned any income because of his skills, knowledge, experience, talent, like participation in any dance shows, in any quiz competition, then also minor child will pay the tax. And third, if the minor child is earning any income because of any manual work, then also minor child will pay the tax, not the parents. So this point also you need to consider while planning your tax affairs. Then we have another provision, electrical vehicle purchase. So if in this year you are thinking to purchase any vehicle, if you invest or purchase an electric vehicle, you will save some tax. So this year we have this provision. The finance minister has introduced this provision this year. The condition is what? That you must have taken the loan from a financial institution to purchase an electrical vehicle during this period. 2019 till 2023. That means whenever any salaried employee takes any loan during the period 1st April 2019 till 31st March 2023, then whatever interest this salaried employee will pay to this financial institution for purchasing for the amount of loan which will be used to purchase an electrical vehicle up to 1,50,000 interest can be deducted while paying the tax. So if my salary income is 19 lakh for example and interest I am paying to this financial institution from where I have taken the loan to purchase this vehicle is 1,50,000. So my salary income will not be 19 lakh, it will be deducted by 1,50,000 and it will be only 17,50,000. So again, I save a huge amount of tax in this case because all the income of a salaried employee above 10 lakh rupees is taxable at a rate of 30%. This is also a point which you can remember. Now next tax planning point. Interest income. Now in this year, what is happening? We must be having f uh, fixed deposits, FDs, interest on FD is taxable, interest on FD is a taxable income. But this year, if someone is a senior citizen, age 60 years or more, then up to 50,000 rupees, <coughs> this interest income is not taxable. Beyond 50,000, it is taxable. So this point also we should remember that this year, Above 50,000 rupees interest income on, on FD is taxable, till 50,000 there is no tax. But it is only for those whose age is 60 or more. For we people who are less than 60 years of age, our entire interest income on FD is taxable. This point you should remember. But there is a problem here. Now most of the people think that bank has deducted their tax. Now suppose my FD is of 10 lakh at the rate of 8% general assumption 
my interest income comes out to be 80,000 per year. Bank deducts only 10% tax. So bank will deduct my 80,000 into 10%, 8,000 tax and deposit it to the government. So that tax is nothing but basically tax on my behalf, which I have not paid, but indirectly my bank has paid. But later on when I file the return of income, I normally find that government charges interest also because I have not paid the tax on time. If I am a salaried employee, if my income is above 10 lakh rupees, then I am covered under which category of taxation? 30 percent flat. So this 80,000 interest on FD is taxable at what rate? 30 percent? Bank has deducted only how much percentage? 10 percent? So 80,000 into 30 percent, I should have paid 24,000 tax. Bank has only paid how much? 8,000. So difference is what? 16,000, which I have not paid on time. So when I will pay this tax, when I file my return of income after the end of this year, income tax department charges interest because I have not paid the tax on time. It is known as late payment. So normally what you should remember, the moment you earn any income, always see is this income taxable if yes then see is there any tax deducted by the person who has given you this income if yes then I'll also see at what rate that person has deducted the tax if that person has deducted the tax at the rate of 10 percent you check your income since most of us must be earning more than 10 lakh per year you must know that that income is taxable at 30 percent so the difference you should pay it yourself by going through online banking in this case you will save some interest penalty which will be applicable when later on you will file the return of income so this point you should remember this is also a tax planning issue which you should remember as a salaried employee then one more issue now whatever income you have earned it is my suggestion that I should show the income after deducting all the eligible expenditures. Now as a teacher, when I check the papers, I get some income. As a teacher, when I take some lectures, I earn the income. These all incomes are taxable. But we have a rule that if I have incurred any expenditure to earn this income, I can deduct this expenditure and remaining is taxable. Suppose I took a lecture and my income from those lectures is 1 lakh rupees per year. But I have spent 30,000 rupees to commute that distance where I was giving lectures to purchase some books or for other miscellaneous things. Now Income Tax Act says that there is no need to pay tax on 1 lakh rupees. I can deduct the expenditure incurred to earn the income. So assuming that I have spent 30,000 rupees to earn the income of 1 lakh, I should show the income not as 1 lakh rupees but as 70,000 rupees. This is also a tax planning which you should remember. And you must be having proper receipts with you so that in future when tax department asks you the proof of this 30,000 expenditure, you must show this proof otherwise there will be trouble. So it's better to show that much expenditure for which you have a proof as a safe side. This is also a tax planning point of view which as a salaried employees you must know. Now another issue, electronic filing, e-filing of returns. Income tax department has normally all the records of all the incomes which we have earned if tax is directed at source. So there is a form 26 AS. Those of you who file their return of income themselves, they can check this form 26 AS themselves. So if you forget some income, this form 26 AS will tell you that this much income you have earned in your year and this much is the tax deducted. So it is better way to first check form 26 so that you can match the income which is in your mind and which is in the official records. So form 26 AS you should always check when you file the return of income for any year. These are some tax planning issues. 
we have some deductions also i am sure most of you must be aware about this that we have a deduction under section 80c which is a common deduction for every salaried employee that up to 150000 rupees we can invest in sukanya samriddhi account tuition fees of any two children contribution towards uh, some recognized provident funds life insurance premium policies so it's better if you can invest 150000 in these scheme so that it saves a tax this is also the tax planning issues now these are some common tax planning issues which are necessary for a salaried employee i have not covered all the issues there are so many other issues also but these are some common tax planning issues now other than tax planning issues let me discuss some some issues uh, for which we should be concerned the question or the debate is is india now a place for rich people to live in because now rich individuals are paying highest tax highest tax so there is a debate on this if my income is more than 5 crore rupees per year if any rich class individual any individual person whether salaried employee or a non salaried employee if his or her income is more than 5 crore rupees per year on an average he will pay 43% as tax to the government of india if my income is 10 crore per year i will pay around 4 crore 30 lakh as tax to the government of india it's a huge tax it's a huge tax burden if the same income is earned by a company if the same income is earned by a company the tax rate is on an average how much so we have different categories of companies if the turnover of this company etc is uh, up to some amount or uh, etc around 400 crore or more than 400 crore so even for a small company suppose the income is 10 crore rupees then that company pays tax on an average at the rate of 29% an individual who is earning 10 crore is paying tax at the rate of 43% and the company a middle company if earning 10 crore income is paying tax at the rate of on an average 29% so now you can see the effect so there is a debate going on and we need to research to do some research on this that is it beneficial for our nation or not should we tax rich class so much that they are paying the highest tax as compared to all other people who are earning the income so this is a debate so i have simply given you an idea that now rich class people are in the highest slab as far as our nation india is concerned whether it is good or bad that we have to see in the coming coming months or coming years but there is an issue this is also a point to be discussed and to be seen then we have other issues also new committee has been formed very soon the committee will present its report because now the income tax act has become very old so there is a need to simplify this taxation system very soon the committee will present a report and then we will see that what are the new provisions so this uh, work is going on from the government around 2 years ago they have formed a committee to simplify the taxation and to fulfill some other objectives also to meet some other objective also so this issue is going on very soon we will be having the report this is also a point which uh, which Uh, must be in your knowledge that this is going on and now apart from taxation my suggestion that we should incorporate original teachings in our lectures if we, if you are incorporating original teaching it's good but those who are not incorporating we should think in terms of this direction like i take the example of my subject income tax act as a faculty i should train my students in reading the original act rather than fully dependent on the books this is the need of the hour we have information available at so many places but what is the authentic information that is the act only 
no students must be trained in reading the act there are around 81000 court cases on this income tax act and as far as i know the cases which i have read no court has ever referred any book academic book they always refer the original act this is the training which is necessary to be imparted by faculty to the students this is original teaching so you can think in terms of other subjects also that what is the relevant original source we should train our students in referring the original sources only then we can make a difference because very soon we will be having competition then machines are taking care of calculations so we don't need students who are expert in clerical things excel will do each and every calculation easily they should train so that they can read and interpret any provision which machines cannot do at least now nowadays i don't know about future but now uh, at this stage machines cannot uh, interpret the provisions it is who hum it is we humans who can interpret it so train the students in imparting the original knowledge of any subject we should train the students like in my subject we should train the students in referring to the court cases reading the language of the court it improves or it 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 provides another insight to a student other than the books students gain so many things the presentation skills they learn they learn that how analytical the provisions were so this is my suggestion to all my colleagues that we should think in referring the original sources up to as much extent as it is possible because we have some limitations of time also but this you should decide or we all should decide that how we can refer uh, the original sources or original knowledge in the limited time this is uh, one of my suggestion this is what basically uh, i have discussed with you as far as some taxation issues are concerned now as 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 a colleague you are most welcome to write me in case you have some tax planning issues i will try to sort it out and will reply to you at the earliest possible time that's it wish you good luck thanks mm -hmm.